my name is Rich Schmidt. I'm here with Selwyn Spray uh, on the phone. It's uh, March 17th, 2020. Uh, Selwyn, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, before, oh, you're welcome. Before we start, I'd just like to get your verbal permission that it's okay to interview you and record it today. Is that okay with you? That's okay. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, so let's start with your kind of early life before Linfield. Tell us a bit about where you were, where you were born, where you grew up, and, and kind of your life before college. I was born and raised in La Grande, Oregon. And uh, what was uh, kind of what was early life like there? What did your parents do? Well, my parents, my father was a, a radio uh, repairman, and my mother uh, was, was primarily a housewife and took care of the kids. What was uh, what was early life like for you? Did you did you play a lot of sports growing up? Well, yeah, associated with the schools, the grade schools. We played football. In high school, we played football. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, of course, other sports year-round, baseball in the summer and so on. And, and what else uh, What else did you do growing up? Did you have any other uh, any hobbies, activities, any, anything like that? Well, there were three boys in the family, and we – did a lot of playing with toys and so on, and uh, hunting and fishing was a big part of our lives. My father was very into that. Mm -hmm. So tell me about about college. Why why did you go to Linfield? Um, it's a little complicated. I finished uh, high school. I was. Uh, not the best student in high school. Uh, I like to play around too much. But uh, I wanted to go to college. Uh, but when I graduated from high school, I didn't have any specific plans, but got a call from Russ Crawford. He was a, a football player that was recruited by Linfield. And Russ Russell uh, called me after I graduated from high school uh, in the summer and asked me if I was interested in playing football with Linfield. He had joined the Linfield football team and they were just in the process of starting their uh, summer training program. And apparently uh, Linfield was looking for somebody in the backfield and Russ Crawford called me and asked me if I'd be interested. And so I was interested and uh, followed through with uh, applying for admission uh, to Linfield. And that involved uh, an athletic grant. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was 1955, graduated from high school and started in the fall at Linfield. Uh, and my, uh, my ambition was to be an electrical engineer. I worked with my father in his radio shop, and he also had an electric motor repair shop. And I did a lot of electric motor repairing. And so I had in my head I wanted to be an electrical engineer. But then uh, when I started at Linfield, uh, they didn't have an engineering training program, of course. But uh, I was interested in physics. I hadn't taken it in high school, but... Uh, it was uh, explained to me what it meant, mm -hmm. and uh, so I uh, I signed up and uh, for physics and mathematics uh, took those courses. That was my major major and minor was physics, minor was mathematics. Were there any any kind of memorable courses or memorable uh, professors that you, that stand out to you as you look back? 
I remember them, but I don't remember their name, but they were very pleasant people. I, I was so grateful for the kindness of the, of the professors that I encountered. Uh, tell me about your, your first impressions of, of the campus and, and of McMinnville. Well, it was a beautiful campus, and I was impressed in that regard. Uh, I lived in a, uh, what do you call them, dormitory, mm -hmm. and uh, that was very comfortable for me. You know, we didn't have a very... Uh, wealthy kind of upbringing. Mm -hmm. um, so I was happy with my dormitory and the people around me. And everything was just wonderful at that point as far as I was concerned. What about your, what about, you mentioned you, you came here mostly for football. Tell me about your, your first impressions going out uh, summer or fall, your freshman year, to, to play football. Well, it's just standard football uh, training. Uh, a lot of calisthenics and scrimmages and so on. Mm -hmm. um, there wasn't any anything really negative about it. It was something that I really enjoyed playing football. I always enjoyed it. Um, more so than my studies in high school. <laughs> so I was very comfortable with uh, what I encountered when I came to Linfield and uh, started working out with the Linfield Wildcats. Mm -hmm. What position did you play? Fullback and then linebacker. In those days, <clears throat> they didn't have a separate defense and separate offense team. Mm -hmm. They were just played both offense and defense. So on offense, I was a fullback, and defense was a linebacker. And uh, tell me about uh, did did you did you play as a freshman? What was the kind of freshman freshman experience for you? Yeah, I started in the. I was on the starting team mm -hmm. uh, as a freshman, and uh, I don't think we won any games that year, 1955. But uh, I had a good time. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the camaraderie with the teammates. Mm -hmm. so what, and, uh, oh, go ahead, sorry. Well, I was just didn't want to leave out the, the studying parts, uh, the education. I sort of did okay with uh, <laughs> physics and mathematics, and I enjoyed doing those subjects. And I was introduced to, you know, ultimately to other courses like world literature and Western history and. There was a little religious course, and I just didn't, came to enjoy all those studies. I wasn't much of a student in high school, but I kind of woke up in college and started reading more and so on. Mm -hmm. Uh, so before we get to, to that, because I know your I know your uh, your, your post college was very interesting. Uh, tell me about the 1956 season. So you, you mentioned freshman year, 1955. Uh, didn't win much, if at all. Uh, 1956, you won the league title for the first time in, in 20 years. So, so what changed in 56? Well, we, we, the team seemed to really, it was, you know, the team of 55 was all held over to 56. Mm -hmm. and we didn't lose any major players. So we'd been together for a year, and uh, we just seemed to, do much better, and I, I don't think we lost any games in the 1956. We had a much more successful t uh, season in 56, and then the, what do you call it, the streak started? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, do you remember winning the champion, the league championship in 1956? Uh, do you remember? Uh, how it was celebrated, how it was, how, how it changed the program, if at all? Well, it wasn't, uh, wasn't much except just an adventure. You know, we, we, uh, did a lot of traveling, visited different parts of the country with, um, uh, And uh, just enjoyed our enjoyed the whole business of the football team and the games and the traveling and so on. Are there any any teammates or or games that really stand out in your memory? Well, a lot of teammates stand out. Uh, I've forgotten many of their names. I remember. Perry was the quarterback, and he was the quarterback for the full four years that I was there. And uh, Howard Morris was, of course, I remember him. And uh, another big guy played guard. Uh, can't remember his. We just called him Tiny. Is that is that Vic Fox maybe? Well, I remember Vic Fox, but I wasn't—I wasn't thinking of Vic Fox. I remember Fox very well. And then there was Umberger. I remember him. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's funny looking at we have a, we have a roster in front of us as we're doing this. It's funny looking at the guys at the sizes of the players uh, compared to now. It's 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 pretty it's pretty jarring to see uh, how small people were playing offensive line in, in those days. Yeah. And, and we commented on that in my last conversation. <laughs> Everybody seemed weaker than they used to be. Uh, so uh, after 1956, a season, uh, I know you... you uh, at what point did you step away from Linfield? What point did I what? Did you, did you step away from Linfield? I know you enlisted in the Army in here at some point. So, so t- take me through kind of the timeline. Oh, yeah. Well, I... Uh, was taking uh, too many subjects, um, ended up on a, instead of four years, uh, it was five years. Um, and I, um, you know, I got into chemistry and biology and I just wanted to learn everything. But, uh, 19, uh, 59 was, uh, End of the well, of '58 was was my last year, uh, and I hadn't finished all of my subjects. Like I had to write a thesis for physics and so on, mm-hmm. but I didn't have any grant, so I couldn't really afford to go another year. Uh, and I, after four years of Football, of course, college football, I, I was not eligible to play anymore. Mm-hmm. College football. So that's when I uh, uh, left Linfield uh, at that time and then went into the Army. So joined the Army in uh, late 59. No, I mean early 59, sorry. Okay. I actually went to the Army in ni- early 1960 when I uh, en- enlisted in the Army. And then you came back to Linfield to graduate. Yes, I did. Uh, came back in 1963 and finished my, uh, took on a, a thesis for physics and I had to make up, up. I remember French. I, I had one year and I needed to finish the second year. When you were in the <laughs> Army, do you want to share your experience uh, overseas that you uh, told me uh, last week? Yeah, that was in the Arctic. Uh, I was there for two years, took the basic training in uh, California and so on, and was 
stationed in um, uh, Virginia. Can't think of the name. The name doesn't pop up, but it, it was an anti-aircraft uh, battery. Uh, and uh, was there for six, well, basic training and, and then six months or so with uh, basic training and so on. And then I <clears throat> volunteered to go to the Arctic, uh, Thule, Greenland, and uh, join uh, a battery there, an aircraft. And stayed there for two years. What What made you volunteer for that? Uh, I was in oh, Norfolk, Virginia, where is where I was stationed after I left basic training. And uh, there was a a guy there that was in our our outfit that was crying because he was being shipped to Greenland. And he had a family and this and that, looking for volunteers to replace him. And I volunteered, thought it would be, you know, I didn't, I wasn't married or anything. So I uh, accepted his enlistment, or his, his responsibility to go to Greenland. And I, I liked it. I could take correspondence courses. There wasn't much to do but read and... Uh, just uh, basic routines, <laughs> staying alive. Staying, staying but it alive. was a, <laughs> and there wasn't much training to deal with, and so on. So it worked out that I, I kind of liked it. The fact it was so remote, and uh, so I was there for two years. And. Uh, before I get to your uh, a couple more questions about Linfield before we get on to what happened next um, do you remember what, what do you remember about coach Durham uh, he was a very kind man how was he as a football coach how was he I mean did you did you enjoy playing for him oh very much he was a very very nice person. And over the years, we became friends. And after I graduated, I corresponded with him to some extent. But I was very, I had much admiration for Coach Durham. He was a very kind man. So you, you, you came back from came back from Greenland and you finished your Linfield degree and and then what happened next? Uh, I uh, got a job with the uh, University of California Berkeley uh, in uh, was well, job as a technician for a proton accelerator. It's called a Bevatron. And so I worked there for one year and then um, decided at that point that uh, I had originally planned to take some postgraduate courses at the University of California, California Berkeley. But after kind of being involved with that sort of research, I decided I didn't want to be a physicist. Although I was interested in physics, most of what I studied in uh, Linfield was classical, uh, classic physics. It wasn't uh, nuclear physics, although we didn't have one year of nuclear physics. But uh, just to being in that surrounding, uh, I was decided I didn't want to make a career of being in uh, physics. 
So uh, after working there at the Bevatron for a year, I quit and uh, decided to go on a worldwide uh, hitchhiking. And, and where did you go? Uh, where did you go? Man. So I traveled uh, quite a bit in the United States, particularly in the South, as things were kind of erupting in the South, and it was interesting to, to see what was going on. I'd never been in the Southern U.S. So I did quite a bit of hitchhiking in that area, and then uh, also in Mexico, and then went overseas to Britain, as, and did extensive hitchhiking in Scotland and Ireland. I had a, a girlfriend from Scotland that uh, that that I met in uh, when I was in uh, Berkeley, and so I just wanted to that I wanted to see what her home was like and so on mm -hmm. so that was sort of a big part of my hitchhiking in the britain but i hiked through ireland extensively as well as scotland and also britain i mean not uh, england and then i've uh, went overseas uh, uh, no, that's right. I went. I, I've already been overseas, <laughs> uh, Britain. Uh, so I came back, and that's uh, when I uh, decided I wanted to go into the field of medicine. Mm -hmm. Some of the encounters that I had when I was hitchhiking made me interested in dealing with underprivileged people. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's, it's encouraged me to go into the field of medicine, but I had to do more college. I did a course or two in Linfield it's in the summer, just a summer school. But then I went to to Portland State College mm -hmm. in Portland. I think it's Portland University now. I don't know. But I did pre med courses primarily there, and, and a couple of advanced mathematic courses. And then uh, was eventually accepted into 1967 into University of Oregon Medical School and finished the medical course uh, and that was uh, it took let's see now went to medical school and then got my degree in 1967 in medicine and from there went into a residency, a general practice residency, internship and residency, three years at a, a hospital in Denver. Colorado, mm -hmm. uh, St. Joseph Hospital. That was three years. And then after finishing my residency in general practice, uh, went to uh, or accepted a position on a mission in uh, what was called Rhodesia went with a mission as a congregational church, mm -hmm. had a mission in uh, 
what it was called, Mount Selinda. Um, in uh, Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. I understand you have some students from Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. We do. Um, what was what, anyhow, what was your role on the mission? What were you What were you trying to accomplish? Well, just healthcare. Uh, as I was. Uh, designated as superintendent to the mission hospital. And then they had outlying clinics, several outlying clinics that I supervised. What was the, and, what, what was that first experience like? It was overwhelming. Uh, I was the only physician there for a while. Then uh, the mission sent over uh, doctors, kind of retired doctors that came and went. But I was there, uh, well, for a total of three years initially. But at the time we, uh, I was, I had two children by then, I'd married and we had two children. So um, we found it kind of disruptive uh, in that uh, there was a revolutionary war at the time. It was not very intense at the time we arrived, but it became uh, considerably more intense uh, uh, with time. And so my family was sent back to the U.S., but I stayed on there for a total of three years. And during my stay there, um, in the process of watching over the cl outlying clinics and operating or superintending the hospital, I encountered uh, 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 guerrillas that were fighting uh, the white extremists or the white government, I should say. Mm -hmm. And uh, I um, encountered the, the uh, guerrilla fighters uh, on my rounds to my clinics and outlying areas. It's a very rural area. And they would stop me and ask me if I could provide them with help provide them with some clothing and medication. And I, they were very friendly. And I guess I was just naturally uh, uh, persuaded in their cause. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, a lot of my trips out to the outlying areas, I was carrying clothing and and uh, medications and leaving at different places for them to use. But this went on for a while. Mm -hmm. And then the government stepped in. They discovered what I was doing and arrested me. And I was... I was thrown in the local jail and uh, I was just held for a few weeks and questioned a lot and then released and then went back to work to the, uh, to the hospital and actually went back to uh, meeting with the uh, 
the uh, guerrilla fighters on occasion. And so I was arrested again, put in jail again, and then finally deported to the U.S. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Did, did, but you eventually, you, you went back, is that right? Yes, I, I had a, when I came back to the U.S., I uh, joined a practice of a, that was uh, managed by a former, not managed, but operated by a former missionary in uh, Colorado, a, a little town called Buena Vista in the Rocky Mountains. And that was a, a pleasant experience. And, uh, that physician that invited me to join his practice was a very pleasant man. And that went well. And I was there for three years. And uh, the uh, mission board, well, in the meantime, uh, Rhodesia became Zimbabwe. The, became the, the white Rhodesian government was uh, well, overwhelmed mm -hmm. uh, and, and the uh, revolutionary government took over and that was with Robert Mugabe And uh, the, the mission board had asked me if I wanted to return, you know, this would be 1981. Oh, that's when uh, the Zimbabwe government came in into power, it wasn't Rhodesia anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was 1980, actually, when that happened. So I gladly accepted their offer. They were they wanted to place me back to uh, this mission. It's called Mount Salinda. And so I returned to what was now Zimbabwe and uh, worked there for another three years. Uh, Part of that was with the government uh, district hospital. Mm -hmm. But there was a lot of uh, problems with the new government. Robert Mugabe was a fairly cruel dictator. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I ended up leaving and returning to Colorado after three years. And did your family uh, did your family go with you when you were there the second time? When I was there the second time they started out there but there was so much going on uh, militarily that uh, they returned well actually yeah they returned to the US we had a home in Buena Vista, and my wife and two children uh, moved back to the U.S. And I was just there alone, I mean, without my family mm -hmm. for most of the time with that second siege in uh, Zimbabwe. And so back in Colorado, uh, did, you, did you continue to practice there? Uh, did, you, did you go back to Zimbabwe again? No, uh, just just the one time mm -hmm. to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, and then I, uh, when I came back to the U.S., I uh, joined the practice of another physician in uh, a suburb of, of Denver. And I was with him for three years. And then I, he gave up 
this practice and went to another practice and he sold he he was the owner of the practice and so when he sold his practice uh, you know i found a position with a uh bro not a bro um oh a clinic community health center that's it mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, I was the uh, director of uh, one of their clinics in uh, Brighton Colorado mm-hmm. well I started out in uh, Yeah, started out in Brighton, Colorado, and then I I decided to go into private. I was with with uh, the real uh, clinic for oh, six years or so, and that was enjoyable. It was a salaried position. But then I decided I wanted to go into practice on my own, and so I got established in Fort Lupton. That's where I am now. I've been there since my retirement. <laughs> I've been there and have remained there after my retirement. I had my own practice, and that was that was okay too. <laughs> that's a pretty but, that's a pretty amazing medical career yeah it, it was had, had its up and down <laughs> but I was very satisfied with my time uh, wherever I was I'm curious in, in all of those in all those travels and all of, all of the things you were doing. Did you did you keep tabs on Linfield the school or, or, or the Linfield football team much? No, it was just kind of out of my mind, I guess. Mm-hmm. I received the information, always read it, and tried to keep track of some of my former uh, classmates and what information uh, the magazines I would receive from Mm -hmm. Linfield. Mm -hmm. And I always loved Linfield. I learned so much and changed everything about my thinking. At at some point, at what point did you be did you become aware of of the streak and of the fact that you had been on the team that that started it? Well, I have a brother uh, who uh, lives in Sacramento, mm-hmm. California, and uh, his daughter uh, had a son who is now going to Linfield and uh, well, what was your question? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's okay. I was curious at what, at what point you became aware of the streak and, oh, uh, and the fact oh, you, yeah. you started it. My letter, uh, my brother wrote, we correspond frequently and he mentioned that, that uh, his it would be his grandson uh, was was on the football team, and there was talk about how the streak started with uh, our team in 1956. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> and he's still there. Mm-hmm. I gave his name to your partner there. Mm-hmm. That's, that's, we'll, have, we'll have to look him up. That's awesome. Uh, 
tell me, uh, having started something like that, that's that's still going 64 years later, what, is, what does it mean to you to, to look back on that and having been part of the beginning of that? Well, it just makes me proud. And reminisce and that sort of thing. What would you want that? What would you want someone to take away from the, the streak uh, what, as it applies to Linfield? What does it mean for Linfield to have done something like that? Well, it's just uh, just very gratifying, you know, to the college and uh, to Linfield and uh, to all the people who participated in the. Uh, streak do you have any uh, do you have any hopes for the future of the school or the future of the football team well I hope they still continue doing well and uh, I know that Linfield's going to do well uh, I guess there's a lot of talk about uh free college education. I hope that doesn't eliminate all these wonderful private colleges. So do we. <laughs> yeah. I, I think there will always be a place for places like Linfield, so I, I, I'm, I'm fairly, fairly confident in its future, but I, there are always challenges. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, I'm curious, uh, uh, you mentioned uh, that you uh, had gotten married fairly early on. Uh, how did you meet your wife, and, and when did you get married? I got married when I was in medical school. She was a nurse in a uh, cardiac uh, team. Mm -hmm. And, uh, well, we just got together and seem to have a lot of things in common. She was born and raised in Switzerland. Uh, and when uh, the family left Zimbabwe, or what was Rhodesia at the time, she went back to Switzerland and stayed with uh, an aunt when my two children were with her. But then she came to Colorado with me when, you know, later. Mm -hmm. When things had settled down a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Matt now to see if he has any questions here. This is the end of end of my part of the interview, so uh, Matt's going to take over from here. Uh, okay. Well, I certainly uh, appreciate all your wonderful stories. This has been uh, really fascinating, uh, and I appreciate you sharing so many vivid memories with us today. It's nice of you to say that. Absolutely, and uh, certainly thank you for your support of Linfield. Certainly with your support, we'll be able to continue uh, you know, thriving in this environment despite whatever options might be available to students. Did you, did you know that uh, I was uh, granted the most inspirational player on the team? Uh, 1958. We, we did not know that. Yeah, I noticed that you mentioned that with poor Howard Morris, but uh, he came before me. Was that voted by your teammates? Yes. That's, what, what did that mean to you at the, at the time? Oh, it's a great honor. That's why I'm bragging about it. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Please do. Do you do you know what what they found inspirational about you? Were you were you a rah rah guy, or were you kind of a quiet leader? What what was it about you? Uh, I wasn't the leader. The uh, I think just because I uh, I studied so hard and at the same time played football. Mm -hmm. Most of my football player buddies weren't. Uh, that devoted to their to their uh, uh, 
academic careers. We've we've gotten some glimpses of that, I think, in our interviews. Yeah, <laughs> you were you were part of a Greek organization. Am I correct in saying that? What's that? You were part of a Greek organization at Linfield, one of the fraternities. Oh yeah, uh, Theta Chi. Okay. Uh, they weren't terribly active at Linfield, which was good, but they were some. They were very friendly guys, and. Uh, they had a, another fraternity that most of the athletes belong to, but too much drinking going on, <laughs> uh, and that sort of thing, wild parties in that fraternity. So I was with Theta Chi, and I was pleased with them. Were there any other, uh, I meant to ask this earlier when we were talking about campus, uh, outside of football and, and fraternity life, were there any other uh, activities you remember, any uh, anything else you did in McMinnville or, or on campus? No, mostly just studied and oh, I had girlfriends, mm -hmm. really nice young women I met and dated. Mm -hmm. What was what would a what would a date look like in in uh, around Linfield at that time? Where where, where did you go? Oh, the movies and hold hands and take walks, long walks, and that sort of thing. That was, uh, Linfield was very inviting in that respect. It's such a beautiful campus. Have you, uh, have you spoken with your, uh, uh, is that nephew who's on our football team? I haven't. Uh, uh, great. Nephew. Thank you. Uh, no, I haven't. I, our family hasn't come. Have, I, I wish I was a little more involved with my family. Uh, yeah, you mentioned that um, too much. Had my, my brother Dick was at Linfield. I, I don't think you mentioned him. No, do you know uh, remember, did he choose Linfield because you were there, or was it a completely just... Oh, yeah, that... it was definitely because I was there, and he was a good football player, but then he got, he lost interest in it after a year, he was, but he, he was a good, in high school, he was quite outstanding, but he got interested in art and radical politics and that sort of thing lost interest in football and so he he left linfield after two years and the last year he didn't hardly participate in football did uh, either of your parents go to college no my father didn't even finish high school my mother finished high school but she she had no uh, further education. Wow! And what did your uh, what did your father think uh, of two kids at a private college? I don't think he thought much about it. <laughs> he was just. I'm not sure if he was glad we went to college or not. He had wanted me to join his business. He had a private business, as I said. Yeah. radio repair and motor electric motor repair and i think he wanted me well i know he wanted me to join his business but i didn't want to do that i wanted more education so he he wasn't uh, you know like out of control angry about sure, that sure. but i think i kind of disappointed him sure sure no i understand i understand uh, do you still have family out in La Grande at all? No. I, I unfortunately, have not been back there for years. But uh, most of the family has gone, if not all of it. My father's side of the family was very heavy in there, La Grande. Uh, actually, lived in a little town 15 miles from La Grande, uh, uh, Spray Clan. But they're all gone now. There's a, a lady cousin, that, but I haven't kept in touch with her. 
unfortunately. No, my I mean, father. No problem. Um, well, uh, that's. I, I do hope that we'll have a chance to uh, hopefully reconnect the team uh, sometime this fall and uh, get you out here after all these years. Uh, it's certainly a lot bigger, the town and the campus, but I think you'll find a lot of the uh, places that you mentioned or probably recall are all still here. Well, thank you. Yeah. I, I keep wanting to make the trip, but I never get around to doing it. There's other things that hold me back we'll to McMinnville. We'll try to get you some proper motivation soon. That'll be, that'll be excellent. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us today and for sharing your memories and your thoughts. Uh, we really appreciate this, and uh, we're going to go ahead and end the recording here at this point. Okay. Thank you.